I have a question. I know that there are, um, there are people such as yourself who experience things like migraine auras or, and, and patterns on the ceiling and, and a certain uh, hallucinatory day-to-day -day experience. Um, and I also know that when people are having more um, isolated experiences, they experience a sort of synesthesia of senses um, that one might see uh, uh, sounds or uh, hear colors. Um, and I was wondering what the overlap of that might be in the brain, a synesthetic experience versus a hallucination. Because there are people who are born into this world who see, col see sounds or hear colors for their entire lifetime and that is their reality. And how, so my question is how would that person's reality differ from another person's hallucination? Um, well, um, synesthesia, as you say, is something one um, is born with. Uh, it has even been suggested that everyone, every infant has synesthesia in the first year of life, but then that it's the possibility is pruned out in the majority of people. Synesthesia used to be regarded as very rare, like one in 2,000. It's now seen as relatively common, about one in 20. Uh, particularly common forms uh, have to do with seeing colors uh, as one hears music or when one reads letters. Um, it's lifelong and it's always the same for a given person. Um, Nabokov in his autobiography mentions that when he was learning to read, he had colored letters and he felt the colors were wrong. And he mentioned this to his synesthetic mother, who agreed that they were wrong, but the, but the two of them couldn't agree and didn't agree as to what the colors should be. Um, and um, the, um, but this, um, and here there is a, uh, a permanent coupling, say, between color constructing parts of the brain and reading parts of the brain or whatever. Um, in the, with something like LSD hallucination, there may be improvised, or, or certain epilepsies, there may be immediate improvised synesthesias. Um, the one epileptic patient spoke of the smell of green thunder. Uh, that's a nice complex, but, um, uh, but the epileptic or hallucinatory ones are unstable and they go away and the next time you take it they may be quite different. And so I really think they're different experiences. Um, incidentally, um, color blind people with color synesthesia may also see colors they've never seen in the world and Martian colors. I'm sensing that you have a personal relationship with this synesthesia, <laughs> hallucination. It, 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 what's the motivation of your question? It's fascinating. Uh, I, it's a combination of the way I perceive things personally and uh, an interest in people who, who experience it in a lot more of a, in a much more dramatic fashion. Like um, there's a book called uh, Born on a Blue Day mm about a man named Daniel Tammet who has uh, full spectrum yeah. synesthesia, so all of his senses are, uh, are combined. Yeah, and I was one, yeah. when you were talking about indigo, I was thinking these colors that you, um, you've never seen before, yeah. is he seeing colors I've never seen before? How is that uh, overlapping with a hallucinatory experience? Um, listen, I, I have a question for you. Um, would you like to be relieved of your synesthesia? No, not at all. No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's uh, not. It's not so dramatic as it is um, been described in, in other people's accounts. I, I think I, it's I, just a helpful way of connecting yeah, the dots yeah. for me. Um, well, well, attitudes are very various. There, there's some. Some people love their synesthesia. Some hate it, and some are, are indifferent. But uh, but the question might be if it were technically possible. Uh, would it be right, would it be ethical mm -hmm. if people wanted to get rid of their synesthesia or does one say God made you synesthetic <laughs> and, 
and you know, you stay that way.